Some of you have caught the thing that I've started saying lately, which is, hey, welcome to the big comfy couch. Because, you know, I kind of said I wanted this to feel like there's this big gigantic couch and every subscriber is sitting on it and we're just like watching TV together and hanging out and I want that to feel this way. We are back with part two. The most beautiful life goes on, a story of BTS by the Asian theory. <laughs> Well as their Japanese album, Face Yourself, proved that they weren't done yet, not even close. During this time, they shattered countless records. Their singles went platinum, they topped charts, they won awards. And not only did they break YouTube records, but they broke records that they themselves set again and again and again. This is the period where BTS really started enjoying global recognition, working with huge Western artists such as Nicki Minaj, Designer, and Steve Aoki. It wasn't their first time having international features on their songs, but it was definitely the biggest. And even though they were already, without a doubt, the biggest act to ever come out of South Korea, they had their eyes set even higher. They went on tour once again for the Love Yourself World Tour. During this tour, they collaborated with Steve Aoki to make the song, Wasted On Me. Wasted on me. Notable for being their first all-English feature. And it also served as a jumping off point for BTS to gain a following of English speakers. Not that they really needed the help, as they sold out concerts even in the US leg of the tour, including at City Field in Queens, New York, where tickets sold out in 20 minutes. And as if that wasn't enough, they dropped the movie in November, Burn the Stage, which in the US alone grossed 3.54 million in the first weekend, breaking the record set by One Direction's movie, This Is Us. In September, Why haven't you all mentioned? Enough, they dropped the movie in November, burn, burn the stage. YouTube read original. Nobody has mentioned this. Why is that? Hmm. Don't tell me. I feel like I feel like there's a reason for that. Don't tell me the stage, which in the U.S. alone grossed 3.54 million in the first weekend, breaking the record set by One Direction's movie, This Is Us. In September, RM had the unique opportunity to speak at the United Nations, where he spoke of anti-violence and self-love. I'm going to be watching this. You all have been telling me countless times about this UN speech, and you know how much I already adore Namjoon. Um... I'm really excited to see that. Years later, he would be offered to speak on a second occasion about persistence and hope in the face of challenges. And to top it all off, in October, the president of South Korea awarded every member of BTS the 5th class Hongwon Order of Cultural Merit for outstanding meritorious services in the field of culture and art, which is one of the highest South Korean orders of merit one can receive. And that's no exaggeration. 2019 estimates put BTS's contribution to the South Korean economy to the tune of $4.65 billion each year, an equivalent to 0.3% of the country's GDP. They were the youngest to ever receive the honor. 2019. BTS invited to Grammy, Time Magazine, Billboard. BTS entered a new era. Not an era of simply global recognition, but global dominance. April 12, 2019. Enter Map of the Soul Persona. First things first, you can't mention Map of the Soul Persona without mentioning Boy With Love. It was simple math. What do you get when you cross the singer of one of the best charting songs of all time that went platinum 59 times in 13 different countries with, without a question, the most globally dominant pop group of all time. Well, you get this. Nothing less than an instant hit. Number 8 on Billboard Hot 100. Platinum in the US. 21 music show wins. Number 1 on iTunes in 67 different countries. The most liked and the most viewed YouTube video in the first 24 hours. The fastest video to reach 100 million views. A current view count of over 1 billion views. Seven boys, one girl, and... A billion views, and it was published in 2019. A billion! Wow. I only know this song from the couple of times I've heard it on Beat Saber, and I loved it immediately. Seven different hair colors. 
They were the talk of the town, invited to talk show after talk show after talk show. The second single on the album was Make It Right. Oh, I can make it right. Written by Ed Sheeran himself, including a version featuring Lau. The album debuted at number one on Gaon and sold 3.2 million copies its first month, and that's only in Korea. It became the best-selling album in South Korea ever. It swept every major Korean music show, winning Album of the Year in each one of them. They followed up this legendary EP with the Love Yourself, Speak Yourself World Tour, where they sold out both the Rose Bowl and the Wembley Stadium in only an hour, the only Ugh. non-English speaking act to do so. An hour? Selling out in an hour, and it's... A non-English speaking tour, to the first one to do that. Mm. They even performed as a solo act in Saudi Arabia, the first foreign act to do that. The last stop of their tour was at South Korea's largest venue, the Seoul Olympic Stadium. They ended up grossing $200 million. During this time, they also created a visual novel style game for mobile devices called BTS World, where the player can interact with the members. This also came with an original soundtrack with tracks unique to the game featuring Western artists, Zara Larson, Charlie XCX, and Juice World for the tracks A Brand New Day, Dream Glow, and All Night, respectively. I'm apparently really out of touch, and I know that shouldn't surprise some of you because to you, I'm an old man, but I have no idea who these three people are. But then again... A month ago, month and a half ago, I didn't really know who BTS was, and now, here we are. In December of 2019, the group swept the grand prizes for both the Melon and Mnet Music Award shows, the first artist to do that. Map of the Soul persona was legendary, truly a marvel in modern music. So, how could BTS follow up the best-selling album in South Korean history, you may ask? Easy make an even better selling album. And that's what they did with Map of the Soul 7. Easy. The album was released on February 21st of 2020, featuring the singles Black Swan mm, Another one you guys are telling me constantly, you have to see Black Swan. I got you. And on. and sold over 4.1 million albums in just the first week, and the first Korean album to be certified as Quadruple Million on the Gaon Music Chart. It debuted at number one on music charts all over the world, including the US, Korea, the UK, Japan, and much of Europe. It's not an exaggeration to say that this album left a permanent mark on the world, launching BTS into legendary status and becoming the best-selling artist in South Korean history. BTS had scheduled a Map of the Soul tour for April of that year, which would have undoubtedly outsold their record-breaking tour only a year prior. But unfortunately, the COVID pandemic caused the entire tour to be postponed, including the show at the Rose Bowl, which I was supposed to attend. But that didn't stop BTS, who performed virtual concerts, spoke at the Dear Class 2020 graduation event, and released the Japanese version of their recent album with an original Japanese single, Stay Gold. Stay Gold! To top it all off, this was only June. At this point, it was clear that BTS had already dominated their home turf, and they had topped the music charts all over the world. This time, their sight was set for the very top. Remember that scene in The Social Network, where Mark and Sean talk about how they don't want a million dollars, they want a billion dollars. How they're not interested in catching 14 trout, but they'd rather catch an 800 pound marlin? Well, that's what they set their sights on. The marlin, the biggest music industry in the world, the United States. And at the top of that music industry, number one on Billboard Hot 100. This small group from a company that virtually no one had heard about eight years ago, planned to take on Goliath himself and dominate the American industry on their home turf. And all they had to do was speak English. August 21st, enter Dynamite. Love that song. Their first English single simultaneously performed better than anyone had expected, but at the same time is exactly what we as an audience had come to expect from the legendary boy band themselves. And they did it. They reached number one on the US Billboard Hot 100, the Global 200, and the Global Excluding US chart. And they made sure that if you hadn't heard of them before, you definitely have now. And if that wasn't already the biggest flex, on October 2nd, they came out with Savage Love BTS Remix with Jason Derulo. Savage Love, somebody, somebody break your heart. 
getting number one on the Billboard Hot 100 again less than two months after already getting it number one with Dynamite and on the Global 200 where they actually replaced themselves at number one, the first artist to do so ever. And this is where we stopped in the original video, October of 2020. So what's happened since then? Well, so October of 2020 and now right now on filming this, it's January of 2022. Okay, so a little over a year, a year and a few months later. And this is hence why we're watching the 2021 update. Not much. On November 20th, their fifth studio album, B, was released, featuring the hit single, Life Goes On. B was met with critical acclaim and hit number one on Billboard 200 and the World Albums Chart, the fifth BTS album to do so, along with topping worldwide charts in countries like Belgium, Canada, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, Portugal, and of course, their hometown, South Korea. And in spite of all these accolades, perhaps the biggest winner was Life Goes On. A synth-pop showstopper encouraging its audience to continue living life even in the midst of a global pandemic. The message was clear, don't give up, life goes on. It hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100, the third BTS song to do so. BTS gave the fans what they wanted with Life Goes On. Life Goes On joined the exclusive club of only eight songs to ever top the Billboard Hot 100 that were not in English, a title most recently held by Despacito. Whatever this show is, this is like one of those things that just grabs you, speaks to you. Whatever this show that I'm looking at is, is uh, like I need that. Tell me in the comments what what this is and what I'm looking for. Some of you all have mentioned the Tiny Desk concert, and I don't think that's what this is. It could be. Um, but this intimate setting is awesome. But it was the first to do it in BTS's native tongue, Korean. The Bad Bunny and Tiny, Intentions by Justin Bieber and Koivo, uh, Dynamite by BTS, the same month, the Academy announced that BTS's Dynamite would be nominated for the Best Pop Duo Group Performance, along with songs by J Balvin, Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, and Taylor Swift. This marked the first time a Korean pop artist was nominated for a Grammy. In December, BTS was invited to sing for... By the way, I'm fully well aware that with the This Is BTS documentary, or the reaction, I guess, with part one of The Most Beautiful Life Goes On, that I reacted to and now this one I'm fully aware that it's almost just me sitting here going wow wow for X number of minutes I can't even like I'm trying to process this Disney's holiday sing-along and on New Year's Eve, Big Hit put on a New Year's concert where they performed again. Things looked really good for BTS and their Grammy nomination, especially since on March 4th, 2021, the official news came. The International Federation of the Phonographic Industry, or IFPI, announced BTS as the Global Recording Artist of the Year, an award given to the best-selling artist of 2020, period, beating out nine other prominent Western artists, making them the first artist from Korea, but perhaps more importantly, the first non-English artist to do so. Later that month, the Grammys, the main event that everyone was waiting for, finally arrived. With bated breath, BTS and the world watched. And, well... And the Grammy goes to... Rain on me, Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande. <laughs> They didn't win. However, they made history for being the first South Korean artist to perform at the Grammys after presenting at the Grammys the year prior. March 31st, 2021, Big Hit Entertainment officially rebrands as HYBE and completely revamps their organization. BTS now falls under Big Hit Music, which is now a subsidiary of HYBE Labels, a division of the HYBE Corporation. Two days later, HYBE acquires Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings. Scooter Braun Project is a subsidiary of Ithaca Holdings that manages several artists, including Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber, Jay Balvin, Carly Rae Jepsen, Black Eyed Peas, Demi Lovato, and others, which means that those artists are now part of the 
same family as BTS. Then, at long last, BTS announced their highly anticipated follow-up single to their smash English hit, Dynamite. And that single was Butter. May 21st, 2021. It didn't disappoint. The retro summer pop hit met immediate success, and you- on May 26th, the BTS meal launched. Yeah, the BTS meal and McDonald's. Yeah, that happened. What? The BTS meal. Oh, look at this. J-Hope. Suga, Jimin, Jungkook, V, Jin, and RM. I need to like study this like a flashcard. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. June 16th, BTS releases their third Japanese compilation album known as BTS The Best. It instantly hit number one on Japan's Oricon chart and sold over one million albums. The first and only Korean boy group so far to accomplish this feat. The new Japanese single, Film Out, was released two months earlier and debuted at number one on the Oricon chart. And as an interesting fact, charted at 185 on the Billboard 200, excluding US chart. Joining Dynamite and Life Goes On, making BTS the only artist to ever have three songs in three different languages on the Billboard 200. On July 1st, following an organizational restructuring, the Hype Corporation announced that Hitman Bang, our same Hitman Bang who got the boys together, resigned as CEO of the company in order to focus on his passion for music production. And while he is still the chairman of the board of directors, he was replaced as CEO by Pak Ji Won. On July 7th, BTS became official models for Louis Vuitton as they walked the runway for part of their Men's Fall Winter 2021 collection. They were named as ambassadors only two months prior, and then for their teaser trailer, they forgot to put V in the video. And finally, that brings us to July 9th, Permission to Dance, which was released only a few days ago. The hit song, which was written by Ed Sheeran, spreads positive vibes as the world starts to recover from the global pandemic. <laughs> Its YouTube debut saw 72.3 million views in the first 24 hours. So there's a lot of numbers being thrown around, and it's 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 really just kind of I'm taking in how huge of a, of an impact these guys have had, and it's really just kind of reiterating how massive this impact is. But at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm I'm watching these visuals, thinking. There is so much to see. I mean, we, we joke about the rabbit hole and the rabbit warren and this whole maze of content that these guys have. And I don't just mean the discography. I mean like interviews and the, the universe and all this stuff. And like I've said, get comfortable, folks. We're going to be here for a while. Placing itself at number 6 of the top 10 most viewed music videos in the first 24 hours. Out of BTS's past 5 singles, 3 of them have been fully in English. And while this trend has been concerning for some fans who have been wanting more traditional Korean pop songs, there's no denying that BTS has enjoyed global recognition like no other international and particularly non-English group before them. And that itself is a sign of success that can't be ignored. Man, and that skill. That dance, I don't, I don't, I don't see. On English group before them, and that. Is Good. I mean, just technical. Itself is a sign of success that can't be ignored. And as a fun fact, there's a line in the song referencing legendary singer-songwriter Elton John. When it all seems like it's wrong, sing along to Elton John until that feeling. He gave the song his personal approval. Wow. So what makes BTS so special? How did they achieve all this? K-pop is a genre that spans for at least 30 years, and there have been hundreds of boy groups and hundreds of girl groups. What did BTS do to rise above all of them and break through to markets never before seen? Historically, the boy band industry has been dominated by white English-speaking bands. And the fact that BTS has not only held their own, but blew any sign of competition out of the water on a global scale can be attributed to nothing less than their talent, hard work, and a bit of a one in a million miracle. They did it through their own blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak. Around the world, we see- And I feel like it says something, you know, they talked about the, the Grammys and when the announcement was made and they didn't win, 
I know like that's got to be a lot to take in, but what was, the caption said, you know, let's hug, let's hug. We've worked hard. And that's the response you have right off the bat. Like that in and of itself speaks just volumes. That boy bands have pretty much fallen into obscurity, but BTS is thriving. And though I stated this all before, it's worth saying again, in contrast to other bands who would sing about romantic relationships with girls and what some would call predictable bubblegum pop tunes, BTS is continuously pushing the envelope and changing their styles. According to an article by Vulture.com, they describe this style as much less a successor of the Backstreet Boys and more of the successors of Michael Jackson, whose choreography and charisma were unprecedented. While of course there's a lot of love for the angelic vocals of BTS, rap has also played a very important part in creating their own style. In stark contrast to the typical boy band where every member sings, it's so refreshing when you're in the middle of a song and you hear RM's raw rapping skills, J-Hope's energy, or Suga's soul put into every single line. Interestingly enough, at the first glance, it seems that the success of BTS was miraculous, despite not being part of the Big Three. But it can also be argued that their success was because of their separation from the Big Three. Their label, Big Hit Entertainment, whose founder emphasizes artistic freedom more than anything else, allowed them to make their own sound. And going back to BTS Universe, it's not often that a K-pop group does something special with each of their songs and albums, utilizing strong storytelling that can go beyond simply the song itself, but rather interconnected with other songs and even other albums to create one large overarching story. And not only... Okay, whatever that is, I'm excited for that. This shot is awesome. It's simple, but it's awesome. I want to know what this is interconnected with other songs and even other albums to create one large overarching story. And not only do they all have their own expertise in performance, but also each of them have had the experience of writing and producing their own music and they're not afraid to let their style evolve over time. BTS during their debut is such a far cry from Wings era BTS and current day BTS. They also chose to tackle more adult issues instead of simply love and girls. While they definitely didn't have a shortage of those, they also cover other very important issues such as mental health, regret, following your dreams, hard work, self-love, and many, many, many others. Side note, somebody posted a comment earlier with a link to like a 45 second video, I think it was Suga, that on New Year's 2018 was just talking to the camera and he said, you know, I hope 2018 is, is great for everyone, not, not us, but like for everyone. And, you know, I hope your dreams come true and it's, it's, it's possible to not have a dream. Just be happy. And I don't know, just the way that he put it out there, it's just so, it's just so wise, you know? Add that to the fact that as fans, we can feel the authenticity of the members themselves. They seem approachable. BTS seems like there's a place for every type of fan. And in this fast-paced world where things change at unthinkable speeds, BTS has stayed grounded and faithful to who they were and who they are. Those kids we saw on American Hustle Life along with their dreams and passions are the same men who stand before us today. And while some artists like to keep their personal lives private, BTS gives us a look at their personal lives through their vlogs, which allow us to become more connected to them than ever before. What is truly amazing is that they're doing this all while singing in their native tongue. Korean. Their music holds so much power that it literally breaks through the barriers of language. And no, they're not done yet. They've shown that they're capable of dominating music charts across the world and even reaching across the Pacific Ocean and conquering the music industry in the United States. What's next for them? Mars? In any case, they've only started in 2013 and BTS is as strong as it's ever been. And that's our 2021 update. There's been lots of exciting news for the group so far, and I'm gonna guess that 2021 will still have a lot of surprises waiting for us. Thank you to everyone who watched the original video. We've changed some of the information to make it more accurate or easier to understand. We're always looking to improve our videos, so if you find something that needs improving, leave a comment below. A big shout out to our almost 160,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. And remember, to break your plans, live like you're golden, and roll in like you're dancing fools. Thanks for watching, everyone. Okay, so that was The Most Beautiful Life Goes On, The Story of BTS, 2021 Update by The Asian Theory. <sighs> okay, so that, I mean, this second half, this part two, is a lot of information just 
I mean, for me, it just felt like it was just the scale, the impact that these guys have had. Um, it's incredible. I mean, it's, I don't know what you can say, really. I mean, if anything, as I said, this is just a reminder for me of how, how far this goes, you know, how many visuals there are, how many stories there are, how long we're going to sit here on this couch together and live this stuff it's amazing i'm looking forward to the next one i think the next the next video episode nine will be it won't be a documentary i want to see some more content there's i know there's so much but thank you for watching as always thanks for joining me on the couch much love look out for each other